Good morning. I'm not sure what the weather is like on Thursday. I'm recording this Wednesday, but it's pretty miserable out there. Grey, windy, rainy. I do hope the weather improves towards the end of the week. Anyway, I thought I would reflect this week upon a really short but very well-known prayer. And we read it in morning prayer, evening prayer and Compline. And it's called the Glory Be Prayer. Um, of course, this is um, a short prayer where we glorify God. But then we might think, well, God already possesses all the glory. And one way I was looking at it is that maybe in glorifying God in this way, we are consciously, if we like, turning our faces, turning our gazes away from ourselves, away from this world, and turning our gaze intentionally towards God and his glory. So the very short prayer is as follows. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So I found one document which um, suggests this prayer might originate back to the fourth century. And it's a prayer which is used in Christian liturgy across many denominations, cultures and languages. And there are some slight variations. But in our Anglican liturgy, it comes at the end of singing or psalms or a canticle. And its purpose is to bring together, if you like, in summary, your feelings and of the, the worship of the, the psalm that you've just said, and to bring it all together as an act of glorifying God. And the prayer can be called a minor doxology, so minor being smaller, and doxology being a confession or a statement of our worship and praise to God, and it can be spoken or sung. And it might be short, but there are two really important theological statements expressed in this short prayer. So the first half says, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. So it's clearly referring to the whole Trinity. This is the great mystery of God. And this prayer expresses each of the three persons of the Trinity and importantly expresses them all as being equal to each other. So earlier versions of this prayer said to God through the Son in the Holy Spirit, but the version we use expresses that each of the persons in the Trinity should be equally worshipped and revered. And this reflects the Trinitarian passage at the end of Matthew's Gospel. I'll just read that. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then, of course, Jesus' baptism. That was a time where the whole Trinity came together. So Jesus was there being baptised by John the Baptist. And the passage I'm just going to read from Luke's Gospel now when all the people were baptised, and when Jesus also had been baptised and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. So this prayer, it reveals all three persons of the Trinity and it reveals that they should be equally worshipped. Now the second part of this prayer um, reveals God as eternal, so existing forever. I should just read it again. As it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And there are many passages of scripture which back up this sense of God's eternity. And I'm just going to turn to the first book of the Bible and the last book of the Bible um, as examples. So, of course, in the book of Genesis, right at the beginning, we read that God created the heavens and the earth and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Um, so that's the presence of God um, at the creation, right at the start of the world. And then in the book of Revelation, 
we read, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. And Alpha and Omega, of course, are the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. So God was here before all things were created. He is present now and he will be present for all of eternity, all the years to come. So I've just finished by reading that short prayer again. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. So it might be short, but I hope you'll agree, agree that this prayer is rich in theology. Bye-bye.